<laughs> now, embarrassment for Labor as the South Australian government's decision to push ahead with a state-based voice. We all voted against the voice, but no, Labor, what's his name, thinks he knows better. It backfired. Just over 9% uh, of Indigenous Australians in South Australia turned out to vote following a resounding no vote in the federal referendum. Joining us now to discuss this is South Australian Liberal member of the Legislative Council, Ben Hood. Ben, great to see you again. Uh, what is going on in South Australia? Please explain. We voted against the voice, but you then do a voice and nobody bothers to turn up. You know, it's what if they... The old saying used to be, what if they put up on a war and nobody came? Or what if they actually legislated a voice and nobody bothered to turn up? What's going on, Ben? <laughs> well, you're spot on, Rowan, and, um, and happy Easter Sunday to, and to all you. your viewers. Uh, look, what, what has happened is probably what we expected. 64% of South Australians voted no to the federal referendum, and now 90% of Aboriginal South Australians have, for all intents and purposes, turned their back on this voice, it's it's a vote of no confidence. There was 2,500, approximately 2,500 votes cast throughout the state, and some electors or some uh, uh, nominators were um, were elected with less than six votes. And <laughs> there are cases that some of them uh, had zero vote. So it begs the what? question: what? Um, Did they even come out and vote for themselves? It's um, <laughs> it, it's an absolute travesty. It, it's a complete failure on on every measure. Uh, and Peter Malinowskis needs to undo this straight away, no doubt about it. Rita. Wow. Yeah, well, well it was reported uh, there, were, there were reps elected with six votes, which is mind-blowing. But we've also seen this in Victoria. Now, Victoria had uh, less than 10% turnout as well, 7%, and uh, and just under 10% for the last uh, First People's Assembly, they call it, in Victoria. But there seems to be no appetite to do a U-turn here. What will the Liberals, the Coalition, do if they are elected? Do you have a firm policy to roll this back or are we waiting and seeing what happens? Look, it's a great question, Rita. And, look, my, uh, I've personally been against the federal vote and, of course, the state vote as well. And as long as I'm in the party room of the state Liberals, I'll be advocating for... A, a repeal policy to be brought to 2026. But at the end of the day, we have a repeal uh, bill being uh, brought before the Legislative Council by the Honourable Sarah Game. I congratulate her on that. But it hasn't been brought to a vote uh, because we don't have the numbers, uh, quite simply. Um, so it is up to um, Peter Malinowskis to pull the leaders of government uh, to undo what has essentially been a failed ideological experiment uh, on behalf of Labor uh, and put a line uh, through this voice. Uh, only yesterday, uh, the Premier and Attorney General Kyle Ma equated this uh, vote, this uh, this successful vote in their terms, uh, to uh, ATSI. And we know exactly mm. how ATSI <laughs> turned out. It was <laughs> abolished because of corruption and nepotism. And I'm really worried, as are a majority of South Australians, I think, that that's exactly where this state voice is going to go as well. James. Well, Ben, tell me about, um, you've got a petition, don'tdividesa.com.au. Tell me how that's going, what that's calling for. And is it true that you've had more signatories to that petition mm. than people actually cast their vote <laughs> in, this, uh, in this election? Well, James, that's exactly right. Um, Don't Divide SA is a petition uh, that I spun up um, last November. Uh, to date, we've had 7,000, uh, over 7,000 votes uh, or um, signs, a signatory on that petition. Uh, so that's about, well, uh, well, I'm not very good at maths, but uh, about 171% more uh, than the people that actually voted uh, in this state voice. And I think that that outlines the issue here, that the Labor government in South Australia are ignoring the pleas of everyday South Australians. They're not focused on cost of living. They're not focused... Uh, on dealing with the energy crisis. They're not focused on small business and backing the family, but chasing down every ideological rabbit hole uh, with their pet causes. And unfortunately, they're the ones that have to undo this. And Ben, sorry, just one more question for you. How much um, will this voice cost to operate, run, implement? And what actual um, you know, authority does it have, if any, to influence legislation? Or is this just simply an expensive advisory body that has no power or that it will have power and have real teeth despite having representatives voted onto it with tiny, tiny, less than a handful of votes? Look, it's a great question, James. Uh, at the end of the day, um, Labor would have you believe both, that it's this 
um, powerful voice yeah. for Aboriginal Australians, or <laughs> it's actually not anything really that uh, terrible. Um, what it is, is the voice can come onto the floor of Parliament and speak to any bill. The clerks of both houses have to advise the voice of any legislation, any bill that comes before Parliament. Now, they can't hold it up, but as we know with the federal voice, and this was the argument, that when the voice will go against the bill from any government, essentially any government that will go against the voice will probably be deemed inherently racist, and they will play it out in the media. It is going to be a handbrake on our democracy, and at the end of the day, we should not delineate our democracy on race. It is simple as that. But Ben, it's not, it's not, it's, yeah, I'm sorry, it's not a handbrake on your democracy. It's the death of your democracy. You do not have democracy in South Australia. If some person with six votes or 11 votes or whatever it is can go onto the floor of parliament and their opinion can sway legislation that the democratically elected and, and overrule, if you like, or, or influence the democratically elected uh, body. It is the death of democracy. There is absolutely no place in a democracy for this sort of uh, cronyism. Uh, and uh, it must be repealed. And Peter Malinowskis, what you have done is shown that Labor's entire Indigenous First Nations voice program is a complete farce. It's a complete joke. You do not represent the, pe the Indigenous people of this country. They voted against you, Labor. Learn the lesson. Uh, ben Hood, thanks so much for coming on Outsiders. Have a great Easter. And please get rid of this ridiculous thing out of the South Australian Parliament as soon as you get into power.